So the reason I'm doing this video is because for some reason Macintosh seems to not want to play as smoothly, as nice as the Windows operating system. So I'm going to run through the steps to make sure that the Yeti is working seamlessly with your Macintosh computer. So the very first thing I want you to do is take your USB cord that comes with it, plug the first end here into the bottom of the microphone, and then the other end, which you're not going to probably be able to see, but I've already plugged it in into the back of your computer or wherever on your particular Macintosh your USB port is. So right now I'm going to pull the microphone over, I'm going to pull the camera over here, show you some things I want you to see on the Macintosh itself. So the first thing I want you to do is go to your Apple icon, go down to System Preferences, as you'll see Hardware is a section I want you to go to. I'm going to scroll over to Sound, double click on Sound, and as you can see here, first I want to click on Output. You can see the Yeti stereo microphone is in fact selected as your default microphone, and that's exactly the way you want it. If for some reason your internal speakers were selected, you want to make sure that that's not the case. Then by selected I mean what has the blue line around it. So in this case the Yeti stereo microphone is selected as your output source just the way you want it. Same thing with your input source. You want to make sure that the Yeti stereo microphone is selected. You know, one internal microphone you don't want line in. If one of those have the blue line over it, double click on your Yeti stereo microphone and the blue line should move over to the Yeti. One other thing besides the input and the output, which are the most important of the system preferences, click on sound settings for a second. Not completely necessary, but kind of just for consistency's sake, I'd make sure that the play alerts and sound effects through section also has the Yeti stereo microphone checked. Input and output more important, but sound effects just for consistency's sake, I'd make sure that's also on the Yeti stereo microphone. So we can X out of there. The next thing I want you to do is it open up a program, and the one I recommend is Audacity, a sound editing program. And the reason why I want you to have a sound editing program is just in case the Skype connection goes south for whatever reason, we want you to have a local copy on your computer, some sort of an audio file on your end that you can send us so that we can piece it together. A lot of people have GarageBand on Mac, and that's perfectly fine for the more advanced user. Audacity is good for the more simple user, more basic user. I'm going to double click on Audacity, see if we can get it to open. Looks like we're going to have to open it up down here, which is okay. Alright, so Audacity actually is not fully open, but I'm going to, you can see Audacity actually is selected. So I'm going to click on File New, get a file open. When you click on the icon, this actually should pop up automatically. For some reason it didn't there, so I just clicked on File Open. So now you've got the program open and you can probably see you've got your standard stop, pause, record, play, kind of like an old-fashioned VCR. What I want you to do when this program opens fully is go to Audacity, then click on your system, or your, excuse me, your Audacity preferences. As you can see, also Command Comma would work if you're a keyboard fan. And what I want you to see over here is I want you to see if the Yeti stereo microphone is selected as your playback device. As you can see, as I'm going to move in a little bit, it is in fact selected as your playback device, both your playback and your recording device you want as the Yeti stereo microphone. If for whatever reason the built-in output was checked with that blue line, you would want to make sure that you move your mouse over it and do the drop-down menu and make sure that the Yeti stereo microphone gets selected with the check mark. Same thing with the recording, make sure that it's the Yeti stereo microphone that's checked with the blue line, not the built-in microphone, not the built-in input. So these two are exactly where we want it to be to play with your Yeti stereo microphone, which you've paid good money for. For the channel section here, doesn't really matter between mono and stereo. I might suggest mono only because it makes a smaller file and when you send it off to us a little bit easier to send a mono file than a stereo file as far as the size goes. These four boxes here, none of them need to be checked. If any of them are checked, you can uncheck it. Either way it's not really a big issue but I just leave them unchecked. Click OK. 
Next thing I want you to do, and very importantly, I want you to do this before you open up Skype. And there's a very specific reason, which I can explain one-on-one -on -one if you're curious on why I want you to do this. I want you to hit record before you open up Skype. Get the program, in this case Audacity, or if you use GarageBand, GarageBand, to start recording before Skype opens. So I'm going to click record here. And I've gotten an error message which says, Error. While opening sound device, please check the input device settings and the project sample rate. Sometimes you get that. This is one of these troubleshooting areas I want to walk you through because that can happen from time to time. So I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Audacity and quit Audacity completely. And I had a feeling that would happen. And let's open up Audacity one more time. All right. So we've opened up Audacity. Program is opened fully. Click Audacity Preferences. Just make sure one more time the Yeti stereo microphone is selected. It is in fact selected correctly, so let's click OK. Now at this point I think the recording should start. So let's click on Record. Let's see if something shows up. And there you go. You can see an audio track is starting to record. You don't see many levels, only because the Yeti is not close to me. I'm moving the Yeti closer now and as you can probably see the levels are going up. And as I get even closer, the levels are getting better and better and better and better and better. And as I move away, you can see the levels are getting lower and lower and lower. So you want to be about using your fist as a barometer for the distance away. And I do have another YouTube video where I go more in depth on distance and the way you want to talk into your Yeti stereo microphone. So you've got your recording going. I'm going to move this down. You want it to still roll as it didn't move for me. You want it to still record as you're doing your business on Skype. So I'll move this down here. It's still recording. You keep it in the background. Double clicked on my Skype icon because we want to start up Skype now. Click on Skype. Open up the program. Let's see if my name is here on Skype and it is. Alright, let me type in my password. Note I'm not moving my camera down because I don't want you guys to see my password. Signing in. Let's see if it signs me in, and yes it does. Now the next thing I would do is go over to the Skype Preferences. Just like we did in Audacity, I want you to go to Skype Preferences. Again, Command, Comma if you're a, con if you're a keyboard fan. Go over to Audio. And see the Yeti stereo microphone selected as your audio output, audio input, and ringing devices. That's exactly how you want it. You don't want any built-in output selected or any built-in input selected. You want Yeti stereo microphone selected as your audio output, audio input, and ringing. And if it's not, then just do the drop-down menu and highlight and double-click on your Yeti. So we've got it the way we want it. One thing I would suggest, it's not necessary, but if you want to just check all your connections before you talk to us I double click on Skype test call it should be a default on anybody's Skype program even if you don't have any other people listed on your buddy list as you can see a window pops up now to do this I'm gonna hang up cuz you don't need to do the test for this video but I would want you to do a test you not only have to have your microphone plugged in here but I would have a pair of headphones plugged in into the underside right here which I don't have for the purposes of this video but any sort of headphones like the ones that are sitting over here would suffice to plug in here when you get that uh, Skype test call it's gonna ask you to do a little sample track and then it's gonna play it back to you just so you can hear yourself so at this point you call Dimitri and I you do the interview you answer the question talk into the microphone and make sure that your levels are good. Again, we have a video on how to use Yeti, how to speak into the Yeti the proper distance so that your levels turn out well. So you're done with the interview. You end the interview. You click end call. Once you're done with that, click stop. As you can see, the program is not running anymore. It's not moving. The file's done. And the final thing I want you to do is go up to here in Audacity and go to File, Export as OGG Vorbis. You could save it to the desktop, you could save it wherever you want, just as long as you remember the name of the file. In this case, I'm going to save it as test1.ogg, and it saves. And somewhere in this desktop is a test1.